Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Welcome to the Sanctified Mind Podcast, Season 2. How are you guys doing? We're good. Happy to be here. Absolutely. Looking good as well. Happy we're doing a Season 2 on video. This is very different. (laughs) It is indeed very different. So, Is it though? It it is indeed very different. We'll see because we can't actually... I mean, maybe I have to look at the camera once or twice. I don't know. Yeah, the problem is going to be not looking at the camera. That's true. So... Oh, I finally got my time in the spotlight, you know, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to edit you guys out, and it's just going to be me talking, so. <laughs> Daniel's lost yeah. all the powers of editing that he had before, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, in this uh, new year and this new season of the podcast, I chose the first book this year, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be actually just reviewing this book uh, for 10, 15 minutes, so this is just going to be a quick book review podcast. And then we're going to have another episode where we actually discuss the book in more details and topics surrounding the book kind of thing. Uh, So really, we're just going to jump right into discussing the book. So the book is On the Road with St. Augustine. Let's give a visual. Let's give a visual of that book. I forgot the dust cover. It it has a beautiful dust cover, actually. This this book is really well uh, put together. I'll say that. It is. I also don't like dust covers, though. Look, well, I don't du- either, but the dust cover was pretty. Dust covers, it was. Are, dust covers are essential for maintaining the longevity of a book. Okay, book elite, so where's book your book? Over here. I bought it on Kindle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So the dust cover really is beautiful. It's a well-put-together book. It's called On the Road with St. Augustine, and it's by James K.A. Smith. So this is a little different than a lot of the books we've done so far. This is a modern book, so this actually just came out at the end of last year. Uh, I read another one of James K. Smith's book, books called You Are What You Love. It's his most popular book, and I really enjoyed it. I've got that one, too. I just haven't read it yet. Yeah, so he obviously pulls a lot from Augustine in that book, and so this book is specifically about Augustine. Right. Uh, we're going to say the Augustine, Augustine wrong this whole podcast. So Augustine, yes. It's, it's Augustine. R.C. Sproul said it was Augustine. I prefer to right. say Augustine. but Well, that's a city, not a person. Anyways, so yeah, what, what were your guys' initial thoughts on this book? Uh, actually, while certain people on this table may have tried to uh, give me a wrong impression of the book, I really loved it all the way through. Maybe that's because I was more philosophical reading this book. Um, it connected more because he engaged with different types of authors in the past and Um, especially with existentialists, like that was my introduction to, uh, philosophy and Christian theology actually in general. So I read this book as if almost I was a new Christian, uh, reading how I came to Christianity and the defense thereof for the first time. Um, so I actually enjoyed this book very much, uh, there were certain points that I didn't agree with the author at the same time. There were certain things that he clarified that I was not aware of. And I'm also interested in what you guys thought of the approach he took. So I, I, I primarily read dead guys for a while now at the behest of my pastor. And I've gotten used to that style of writing. It seemed to me that the author was a bit more, contemporary in his writing, a bit more flowery, um, kind of took a while to get to the material point that he was making, which, you know, kind of bothered me at some points. However, when he got around to talking about Augustine and his thought and especially his life, I was definitely intrigued. I was definitely encapsulated by what he was saying. Um, so I, I enjoyed the book as a whole. Um, I'm not too fond of the writer's writing style, uh, but in general, I love reading about the old theologians, especially their lives, and I definitely connected with what he was saying about Augustine's life and Augustine's journey at many points. Yeah, and I feel like this it's kind of a weird book in the, the fact that it's modern and contemporary, uh, but even though it's modern and contemporary, I feel like it's not an easy read per se, uh, because like Ryan said, he does engage with a lot of philosophy and philosophical ideas and discussions and he references a lot of 
old writings and stuff of different, you know, Christian and non-Christian writers, obviously August, Augustine as well. Augustine. So I do feel like it's different, and, and he's a very popular author. I think his last book, uh, his most popular book, sold 100,000 copies, which is a very successful book. So mm-hmm. it's interesting to me that someone who's contemporary like this and writes, uh, and I do agree with Bo, like some of it is much different than the writings of old dead guys like that I'm more used to reading as well. So some of it took, you know, getting used to reading. But I really appreciated that there was depth and substance to this book. And I did feel like it was, it did make me think. And I agree with Ryan, like it made me think about a lot of things. And I, I really enjoyed reading it. Yeah, I, I would say that one of the, the things that I really did appreciate about it is that we have a tendency now as contemporary people to look back at the the theologians of old, your your Edwards, your Calvin, your Augustine, you know, your Turretin, all those people, and see them in this light of how we see them now as almost like this. You know, even as as reformed people, we see them as almost like saintly people. In reality, they had the very same struggles as we did, and I'm sure we'll get into that in the the next segment. Um, but it was very, I was very appreciative of the fact that to to understand that Augustine had, like he said at one point, had been through everything I'd been through. You know, he he. He wasn't a uh, a sheltered person who was regenerate at the age of five. You know, he was a person who'd gone out, lived amongst the world, been converted, and came back. Um, and that was uh, very helpful, and I, I had a great appreciation for that. Before we go further, let me just ask, have y'all read much, Augustine? Have you read the Confessions? I, I read, uh, Ryan, what was the book that was attached to the Gordon Clark book? The Little Blue one. We've talked uh, about it before. Lord this. God of Truth. That was the Clark version. What was the Augustine part? Concerning the teacher? Yes. Okay. So I read that, and that's the only Augustine I've ever read, and I read that probably in 2011. So so I read a lot of Augustine when I was first uh, trying to search for how um, the Reformed tradition or the doctrines of grace in particular may have been represented in early um, Christian authors and I wrote a series of articles on him, especially when I was growing in the faith, um, in particular to the Reformed tradition. And uh, so I I can't say that I have read everything that he has written, but at the same time, I definitely went through the majority of his works and found a lot of commonality, I would say, between what I was going through then and what I'm going through now and what he was going through then. And um, I think that was a lot of what he was expecting when he wrote these things is that as you're reading my works, I'm hoping that as an author, you're seeing some paths that I've taken in my own life that you're able to see as the reader that you're approaching to um, sort of a common bond, I would say, as a fellow brother or sister in Christ. Yeah. And, and I've read, uh, I've just read Confessions. I actually read them last year. I definitely feel like I need to read them again, and I definitely appreciate this book. You know, just having read con- his Confessions, I feel like I understand more of what Augustine was saying, Augustine was saying in the Confessions <laughs> through reading this book. But let's get into what the book actually talked about and kind of review its contents for a little bit. So the, the book is called On the Road with, with St. Augustine. So... I would say the the overarching theme of the book is the road as life right and the how we travel that road you know what is the destination of that road or is the road itself a destination what do y'all think of the overarching theme of the book so I mean I I appreciated the I had kind of a dual appreciation um I understand that what he's saying is that for the Christian who is a pilgrim in this world uh, this journey is not the end. The end is the destination. The end is our eternal glory. However, what I really appreciated was that uh, through Augustine, he pointed out that there is a significance in the journey, like what we were talking about before earlier. There's a significance in the journey that leads you to the destination. The destination is, of course, the ultimate goal, and that is the ultimate, uh, you know, that's that's what everything culminates into. But there is real significance to the journey. There's real value in the journey and the journey has its eternal value too. It's not just that what we do on earth, uh, the significance of it ends the second we enter eternal glory. 
you know, if if what we do on earth is done for the glory of Christ and his kingdom, well, that is eternal glory. So there was a dual significance there that I really appreciated that I find la- lacking um, in a lot of modern evangelical works that make it seem like this notion of whatever happens on earth in this world is irrelevant. All that matters is getting to heaven. You know, no, we, we are laying up treasures for Christ on this planet, on this earth during this lifetime, and those treasures have an eternal significance. Um, and I think that, that that dual action really spoke to me, and I really appreciated it. And that's the same impression I got, I would say. Um, I think the author's major point is that all of us are in exile right now. We're right. not at our true home. We're refugees. Which is, yeah, we're refugees. Yeah. We're, we're not in the presence of our Father. And at this point, we're currently exiles. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. And we're making our way homeward, I would say, and we're trying to bring along people um, to that journey. But at the same time, this is passing. It's not going to last forever. Right. And we have to reconcile ourselves with that. And the way in which we do that is to read his word, see how you know Christ himself lived among us, and try to follow his path to that glory that we're expecting not only of ourselves, but ultimately to God. Absolutely. You know, he talks, you know, in speaking of the road as our life, he basically presents two options as far as how we view the road and how we view life. Where, you know, the first option for the unbeliever or anyone who doesn't believe in the true path or in Christ would be this idea that the road is the destination, yep. right? The road is the main purpose and point of your life. And I think he lumps everyone who's not a Christian into that because his point is that there is only one true destination for humans created in the image of God. There is only one true thing that will satisfy our souls, that will satisfy uh, the longing you know, for home basically is how he, he puts it in the book and it is Christ. And so if you're not, if you don't have that destination, uh, as you, if you don't have that as your destination, then all you have is the journey, right? That's all you have because there is no ultimate destination. You haven't found or identified. You're always going to be on the road searching right. for something to fulfill, searching for something to, uh, you know, give meaning. And, and like he says, searching for your home and unless you know, Christ and God is the destination, then there is no, there's nothing else. You're just going to be searching, right? Absolutely. So I know that one of the thoughts that you had that we were discussing prior to this podcast was um, the center of the book, maybe, as far as your perspective, um, being that there's a difference between the ultimate and the path that we take to get there. Um, And there's a lot of people that might listen to this or might have their own idea of what their life is about. Um, Can you describe the difference between the finite and the infinite maybe that you think might be the heart of this book or? Well, seeing, seeing as how we're approaching our allotted time limit, why don't we leave that for uh, the next segment? Well, so I, let me quote the book here and then we'll talk about that as the end of our review of the book and we'll wrap that up. But he says in the book, the heart's hunger is infinite, which is why it will ultimately be disappointed with anything merely finite. Humans are those strange creatures who can never be fully satisfied by anything created though. That never stops us from trying. So I would say that encapsulates the whole book as far as we are always, the human is always going to be on the road searching because we were created in God's image, we were created for God, and so we're only ever going to find our fulfillment and satisfaction in something that is beyond us, that is something that is more than us. And so if you don't find that in Christ, then you're just going to be searching. You're always going to be looking your whole life, and you're never going to find it. And so I I think that's the driving point of the book, I would say. I would agree, and that's why I also found this book applicable to a lot of the uh, readers who may find it, who may, from this podcast even, pick it up and uh, search through the chapters and see what, you know, gems they can unfold from it. Um, There's nothing in this life, you know, created that you can find that will satisfy you. And that was, I thought as well, the heart of the book and what the author was trying to convey, where as soon as you understand that or grasp that, 
it really calls into question where you're going, what you're ultimately trying to arrive at as your goal. And once that's in perspective, um, it's really going to orient your whole life towards hopefully that end. And that really calls into question a lot of things that many, maybe, you know, a lot of us have as far as what we do in our daily lives. But at the end of the day, you know, we're not just living day by day. We're living towards an ultimate purpose. Right. Unless you accept that, you know, what are you ultimately living for? Right. Is there any meaning to what you have in your day to day life? And Nietzsche answered that question pretty well, didn't he? From the he unbelieving did. expective perspective. So Ryan, you recommend the book? I absolutely would. In fact, I strongly recommend it. Um, it maybe has a bit of a more philosophical bent, which is by all accounts from me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, um, yeah, I think that anybody who has maybe somebody to go through with it, especially if you're struggling with some of the concepts that he may present, um, all the better. I think that the author does a wonderful job of trying to tie in all the struggles that we go through um, with common experience. And he has different chapters that deal with that. Uh, you can you know, find a table of contents on your own if that's you know your concern. I thought that there was plenty in this book that you could get useful information from and uh, very applicable Christian oriented information from. What about you, Bo? I I would agree with Ryan. I would recommend it. Uh, while I, it may not be the exact type of writing that I prefer, that's fine. That doesn't mean that you're not being stretched. It doesn't mean that you're not being challenged. Um, it doesn't mean that you're not learning from something. Um, I appreciate it, and what it really served for me was a springboard because I have not read much of Augustine um, as to what can I read from Augustine. So those of you that might be listening to this and are on our Facebook page or can comment on the post, where do you start with Augustine? That's always my question with any theologian that I'm not very well acquainted with. What's the best introductory reading? Where do you start? Where do you go from there? Um, I am interested in that, and I would like to read more Augustine based off of reading this book. So, yeah, I, I would recommend it. I appreciated it, uh, even though I got frustrated with it a couple times. You know, it is what it is. And, and I, I would recommend it as well. Uh, you know, I thought some chapters were better than others. Right. I, But overall, I, I gained a lot from the book. I look forward to reading it again in the future. I think there was a lot that made me question things or made me think, which is obviously a good thing. And so there's, there's a lot to be gained from the book. So, yeah. So I think uh, we all recommended this book. We're going to cut this off here and then we're going to have another podcast with a kind of a deeper discussion about the book and the concepts in the book. So be looking out for that one as well. Thanks for joining us.